Hey, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Amy Howard, and I'm coming to you from Memphis, Tennessee. It's 3 o'clock Central Standard Time, and this is just kind of a weekly gathering that we have with you virtually to be able to show you the versatility of the product. Specifically today, uh, we're going to talk about the Rescue Restore Paint in a Maker Studio. If you're not familiar with the Maker Studio, it's a sister company of mine that we are in a direct sales model that allows you as a creative or as a maker to be able to have his or her own business that you don't have to worry about inventorying products, but you just want to be able to use your expertise and your love of crafting a beautiful life to be able to have a business that you can share with your friends, with family, and maybe even future friends. So be sure and contact one of our makers so they can share more information of what that opportunity looks like. But today I wanna to just quickly go over with you a couple of different surfaces that allows me to be able to craft a beautiful life in my own home and different projects that I like doing on an ongoing basis. Because this is a one of a kind piece of furniture, both of these pieces are that I'm gonna be showing you today. I won't be able to finish them in their entirety, but I will be able to finish them and then post a picture up on our Instagram and be able to show you what it looked like completed. So if you don't follow us on Instagram, please go to a maker studio um, on Instagram. And if you decide to be part of our business opportunity, we have an incredible uh, group of maker bosses that we share all kinds of projects that we're doing that you could be a part of as well. So just to be able to go over this a little bit today, this is a mid-century modern bench. Um, this piece is probably from the early 60s and it's American made and I was able to get it for $20. One of the things that I always make sure of is when I see something in an antique mall that I frequent uh, very often, I always try to make an offer on the piece. And if this is something that you're into about buying pieces and you like flipping furniture, you definitely would be interested in my new book, um, Rescue, Restore, Redecorate, which you can talk to one of our makers and they will tell you how to be able to purchase that and use it for all different kinds of recipes that you can use on rescuing and restoring pieces of furniture. So this particular antique mall that I go into uh, quite frequent, they know that I paint furniture. Um, and the, oh, the other thing is that I want you to make sure that you get a sales tax number so that way you'll be able to save the, in, in Tennessee it's 10% for us in Memphis. Um, you can save that 10% also, but they'll usually give you a 10% discount. Sometimes they make you spend over $50, but always try to negotiate. So, but I got this bench for $20, and I thought it would be fun to be able to show you how to use the Rescue Restore paint on it. So, the first thing you're going to do, as with any project that you're going to be using our products on, is you want to clean it. So, you want to make sure that you get this furniture cleaner and put it onto a rag and clean it really well. You don't know what's been on these pieces. <coughs> let me just kind of, let me see. If, excuse me. It's not really, really dirty. This is what we call vinyl or pleather. And the cool thing about it is you can use the Rescue Restore paint on wood, on this metal, as well as this vinyl. So that's one thing I wanted to be able to show you today. So I'm going to clean enough so that way we can work on it. I want to dry this just a little bit. You don't have to wipe it with water. Just let it kind of air dry for just a minute or dry it um, with a rag, preferably a lint free. And then I want to show you about some new brushes that we have. These are our beautiful uh, two inch wedge brushes. It's going to lay the Rescue Restore paint down beautifully. And this is a new color that we have. It's called Sunday Nap. Yes, in the South, one thing that we like to do, especially our puppies, uh, they take Sunday naps. But um, so I shook that up just a little bit. And this is a gorgeous gray color. It's a color that would go in pretty much any room. If you're painting furniture and you want to be able to flip furniture, you do want to make sure that you're choosing colors that could go in almost um, any home. So that way, things more in creams and grays and believe it or not even blacks black can be a great neutral on a piece of furniture that allows people the versatility to use it 
If you're going to be doing furniture for people and actually it's part of your um, part of your offering in your business, they can have you customize it and do it in any color that they want. But as far as painting furniture and going into being able to resell it, I would stay with neutrals. So Sunday Nap is a beautiful color. Now, you'll notice on this wedge brush, the bristles are beautiful. They are synthetic, but they're a very fine synthetic. It's going to lay the paint down beautifully. So I'm just gonna make sure that I, I load it up. I'll stir it around just a little bit and then allow some of it to kind of drip out and then I'm just gonna lightly touch it on both sides. Still, the brush is very, very full of paint. One of the problems or the mistakes that people make a lot of times is that they don't put enough paint on the surface and then they continue to go back in and they try to continue to apply it and then you'll get what's called double processing. And that double processing, you don't have a wet edge and, and I apologize for men if you're watching this, but the analogy is if you're painting your nails, you load up enough paint to be able to go over it maybe one, two times. You don't sit there and continue to brush over it again and again, or it starts to get gummy. We call it double processing. So you wanna make sure you load up enough paint to be able to keep it on your brush, make sure that it's not dripping, but it's still loaded up, and then that way you can start painting. All right, so if we can, I'm gonna come up on this surface. I want you to be able to see, it's gonna be kind of difficult. Uh, to be able to paint so you can see what I'm doing. But on this vinyl, as a rule, I would have to, um, I would have to normally use a sprayer, but because of these brand new, amazing brushes we have in a maker studio, you can get, look what a beautiful paint job that is. See how smooth it is and gorgeous? You can paint vinyl and get a great looking finish now, I'm gonna have to kind of move my brush around because it's just an odd way to be able to paint up here like this, and Lisa Max holding the brush for, I'm holding the um, phone for me, so she's trying to get you an angle up there so you can see. But look how beautiful the coverage is. I'm gonna wanna make sure that I put two coats on this, but I'm pretty amazed at how great it looks with just one application. Look at that. Can you tell already how adorable this bench is gonna be? I'm gonna come around now in front because I want you to see something. As a rule, a lot of people try to look at making the legs and the, um, the apron a different color. On this, I think it's gonna have more impact to paint the legs and the top the same color because having that different like that it's expected but I think I'm gonna be able to come back in I'm gonna work my way around you see how I'm constantly kind of feathering it out long clean strokes so that way you see my application now watch here again you see how much paint I've got sitting there and I'll feather it out work my way around the corner I'm working fairly quickly I don't really have any drips on my surface. You see that um, it goes on pretty nicely. And working on my top. Now, the fun thing is, this has no VOCs. It has a beautiful smell. We've put natural essential oils in the paint. So it's not like you're, you're smelling like paint. It's not gonna bother you, because a lot of people that know me know that I have asthma. So, Here's an area that now I want you to see how you can transition. You can come directly down onto this leg and I'm gonna just kind of, I do want to paint it in long clean strokes like this and I'm gonna work my way around. Now as you've transitioned and you're working your way around the side, always on these legs go from top to bottom. I don't want you to paint horizontally because that's gonna be a lot easier but as far as the, uh, the final look that you want, I would prefer that you go up and down. The thing is, I'm gonna stay off of this. Uh, this is not, prob this may be solid brass, I'll have to check it. But with these little brass feet like this, what I thought might be fun is I'm gonna paint this, put a second coat on, and then I'm gonna tape this off right here, and I'm gonna paint this white. And then I'm gonna come back in here on top of this little button. Can you see this little button that we've got? 
and I'm gonna also paint that in blessed and then I'm gonna tape out this tape this piping that goes around here and I'm gonna do that in white as well this is going to be adorable so it shows you already how I've taken this little $20 um, bench and um, I'm going to transform it into something that's really cute. And here's what's funny. Lisa Max holding the camera. And when I told her that, she was like, oh my gosh, I love that idea. So when, I, when you're looking at a piece, always try to think about it. How could it be totally different? What, what's really going to set it apart? Of course, you have to think about where is your client? If you sell it, where are they going to use it? Where are you going to use it? Wouldn't this little bench be adorable in front of a child's twin bed or, um, or maybe in uh, adjacent to maybe a cocktail table, more of a mid-century modern cocktail table that you have maybe in your family room? So you will notice as I've worked on this, I would normally never stop halfway. I would make sure um, that I would work my way across the whole thing because I want to keep a wet edge the entire time and then I'll always feather back into it. But you see, literally, like if you have a small child and you lay them down for a nap and you know you've got maybe um, an hour and a half or two hours to work on a project, you could uh, paint this bench, dry it with, uh, with a little bit with a hair dryer, and then come back and put a second coat on it. I would probably work on uh, taping it off as far as um, painting the piping and the feet until it had a chance to just kind of dry. You know, the other thing is that you need to make sure of, when you're working with the Rescue Restore paint, I'm just gonna come around and check this on my bench. Don't you love how it's looking already? Now, this is gonna dry down to a beautiful matte finish. It's not going to be shiny. If you want it to be shiny, you can come back after it's dried good, um, and you don't have to sand it because it's, it's vinyl. You can just come back with our um, light antique wax and put a little bit on a rag and come on top of it and then buff it, and it's gonna have a really pretty sheen. You don't have to seal this. You know, one thing that we talked about the other day is the fact that on trend for 2019 is black matte. Um, cabinets, um, upholstery pieces, all that type thing. This is a perfect situation to have in a black matte finish. It'll be beautiful and you don't have to seal it. Our Rescue Restore paint um, in the black is a gorgeous dead matte finish that allows you to be able to paint things like this and not have to come back and seal it. You don't have to worry about the ceiling if you don't want to. It will make it a little bit more wearable, especially if you're painting fabric or upholstery, but especially on the vinyl like this, this is gonna dry down in about 15 or 20 minutes. I'm gonna go on and put my second coat on and then I'll come back with the wax. Now, I will not wax it until I've come back and taped off with just some regular painter's tape and done my piping in white, my buttons in white, and then my feet. So um, that way after I've painted that, I'll probably put two coats of the white on there and then I'll finish it off with my wax. Always allow your wax to dry about 15 or 20 minutes and then buff it with a lint-free rag and you're done. So um, be sure and look out because I'm going to be propping this out and doing a hero shot on how adorable this piece is gonna be. Um, and to be honest with you, it may go home to my house now that I see how cute Lisa Mack shaking her head now is going home with me. Um, but you see, it now has a new story to tell. One other thing that I want to show you before we head out today is the fact that the versatility on the Rescue Restore paint, I'm just going to set this aside, allows you to be able to now, if you wanted to, you can transition with this same paint and you can go in and paint these silver trays. I will tell you, every estate sale I go to, they have silver trays. 
um, and they're usually the less expensive ones like this. Um, they're, they're not silver plated. You don't want those. You want the ones that are really tarnished um, and kind of grody looking. The grodier the better. Um, but that way, and I, as a rule on these items, you can get more selections on the first day, but it's best if you want things like this on the second or the third day. You can get these for about three or four dollars, eight dollars, ten dollars max with the handles. But the fun thing is, you can make these into um, chalkboards. A lot of people don't realize that our Rescue Restore paint that I just painted with can also be a chalkboard because you can, you can um, use it, you can wipe it off with water, you don't have to seal it. You don't even have to put a sealer on it if you don't want to. But you will notice what I'm doing is I'm cleaning this very, very well because there's a lot of grease and grime on this that I want to make sure that I get off. Now, a lot of people don't realize, but now in a maker studio, we have these small containers, they're two ounce containers of our Rescue Restore paint. So it allows you on small projects like this, depending on what color you wanna work with, you don't have to buy a large container. These 16 ounces that we have over here that I used on the bench, I would get a larger one for that bench, but something like this, it's perfect. That way all I have to do um, is come back in. I may, I may want to, if I wanna use my larger brush, I may need to pour this into a bowl to be able to get my brush in, but I wanted to just show you how easy this is. Now, as a rule on this, I will not paint this outer part right here. I will try to stop about right here. That way, this could be an adorable um, front door ornament type thing that I'm, I can hang on the front door that I can put um, with some of our stencils. I can monogram it. This could also be a um, a great menu that I'm gonna show you in just a minute with what I did with one of my stencils. But you see how I'm working my way around? Look how I'm loading up my paint again. I have it pretty heavy. I'll lay it out, but I'm constantly kind of going back into that wet edge where I had with a little lighter touch and feathering it out. Amy, can the same method be used for leather that you used on the, on the bench? Yes, you can. And I, I do want to tell you this. The, the type of tool on leather is very, very important. That this brush, this new brush that we have that is um, a patent pending is very, very important. It comes in three different styles, but as far as painting leather or vinyl, this brush is perfect. Um, so you can talk to your maker that we have and you want the wedge two inch brush. Um, you can, if you're in the process of working on this, like while this first coat is drying, wrap this in saran wrap or put it in a little plastic bag. That way it'll keep it wet. And that way after about, let's say 30 minutes where you feel like it's good and dry, um, I can go and put the second coat on and then I'm gonna wash it with soap and water. If you're working with our waxes, I would really say don't use this brush for wax. You need to use our chip brushes or just a rag to be able to apply the, the, uh, the wax itself. And if you do use a brush, always make sure that you clean the wax brush with the furniture cleaner or some mineral spirits. This is not just mineral spirits. This is, it took us over a year to formulate this and it takes off wax as well. So that way if you put too much wax on, especially like a dark wax on a project, that will take it right off and you can start all over. So I want you to just see how easy this is, how very little of this paint that I have used. So that's why I love these little pots. They're just so perfect to be able to do all those kind of projects on. This will dry down. I can change up the color with the seasons if I'm using this on my front door. I might paint the back of it in red and then come back and use one of our stencils and do it in, um, in green and metallic gold. So I'm gonna use that as a segue I'm not going to continue to paint this as much as it was. I wanted to show you the versatility of, um, now this is Southern Gentleman that I'm painting on this metal tray to be my chalkboard. This is Sunday Naps that I used on this bench. It's one of my favorite colors. Um, you want to make sure that you get the right tool, the right brush on this vinyl or leather. And you know, the cool thing is, um, if you like brown leather sofas, which are very rich looking, they're very Ralph Lauren looking, which never goes out of style as far as I'm concerned. You can use our brown color, it's called Bold Prayers. 
and brush that on your leather sofa. Um, allow it to dry, of course, very good in between. It's gonna, it's gonna dry a little slower on vinyl and leather. Um, and then put the light antique wax on top of it and it's going to look very rich, just like a brown leather sofa. You're gonna be so pleased. So a lot of times when you find upholstery pieces like that, that um, you, would, you would never think about painting because they're not gonna crack, it doesn't. Part of putting the wax on top of it keeps it very pliable and soft and it also gives you the versatility on what kind of surface that you use it on. So I'm just gonna come over here, I wanna show you two other areas where I used um, the Rescue Restore paint. Of course, this I did in um, black on this particular tray, which we have used this on a little easel like this. And I use a chalk pen to be able to write in what my menu is. It's great when you've got a buffet set out or you've got different casseroles or you can make individual little um, paper tents to write on what's on them. But I love just having little bullet points up here as far as what particular appetizers or hors d'oeuvres I have. And I used our stencil on this. Now, of course, this is long, um, but you see how we just used the menu part. This was used with our chalk art that you can actually wipe off. It's totally different than the Rescue Restore paint. Um, and here was another scenario where I used the same stencil on one of my cabinet doors that I could actually um, write on as well. So I will tell you that the versatility of the products with the Maker Studio is pretty incredible. It allows you to be able to do um, projects and surfaces to be able to create all these different looks and the tools and the additional products that we are continuing to develop here at a Maker Studio is making it one of the most diversible DIY companies that you'll ever have worked with. So I really encourage you to get with your maker, find out about the business opportunity, maybe host an event at your home where that way you can get together with your friends and family and do projects together and learn all about the line and what all we have to offer. So I'll see you next week. Until then, be sure and follow us on Instagram so you can see this adorable bench and this tray completely finished. Bye, guys.